Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. We talked about conductivity in solids, today we are talking about conductivity in fluids. And we know from movies, if somebody is lying in the bath tube and then you see already the hair dryer moving a little bit and then it falls into the water and there is a lot of action and smoke and everything yeah? and the person inside died movie end <laughs> but according to this common belief I can tell you ordinary water pure water is not conductive pure water is pretty good isolator even yeah? because those water molecules are pretty stable and they are neutral however this is not our everyday experience. Usually it is conductive. So usually this, maybe it's a little bit exaggerated what is shown in movies. But if you drop a hair dryer in your, in your bath tube, you may die. Yeah? Why is that? Now I said, okay, the material itself is not conductive. Water is not conductive. You need to add something to the water. You need to add other chemical components, 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 of course, and those components help to, to help yeah? to make the water, the liquid, conduct. Different components. One typical component is, for instance, salt, nitrium chloride, yeah? table salt, standard table salt. Or there are some acids which behave that way. There are a number of materials which uh, will help. And now I tell you why. Okay. So let's take, let's take salt, natrium chloride as a base. Uh, so if you put natrium chloride in water, what will happen? It dissolves. Uh, dissolves. It will disappear. It will get somehow into solution. Between, between water and salt, we know that, yeah? because I think everybody of us already have seen pasta cooking. Yeah? Red table, the water, salt water, sea, yeah? sea, the ocean, salt water. So there is then, there's, the salt is, is, is natrium and chlor, they are separated, and then we have one natrium and one chlor. Yeah? So I will draw this now. So if here, one atom, two atoms. One is natrium and one is chlor. And we have, of course, the hull. And, you know, atoms, atoms are fans, fans of the superstars of atoms, superstars of atoms are noble gases. Yeah. They are the atoms for them. And every atom wants to look like the superstar of atoms. The superstar of atoms has a perfect hull, a perfectly filled hull of electrons. There is no dimple, there is no tank, there is this perfect, perfect thing. And this is the energetic goal. I, of course, they don't want to look like that. It's the energetic goal of this to have a perfect outer hull. Uh, and now it's the case that natrium, natrium, uh, has one little electron too much. So there is like there is like a little additional bump somewhere which makes it not flawless. Yeah? It makes it not flawless. And the chlor, chlor has a little dent somewhere. So there's one electron missing. If natrium would have one electron less, it would from the outside it would look like neon. Yeah? Perfectly like neon. Yeah? The inside they cannot change. 
there are as many protons inside as the mud, but they make it appear from the outside like they would be near. Yeah? This is this is what they want. And chloride has one electron to less to appear like argon. Okay? Noble gas argon, more beautiful out the how argon. And they want to have this, they want to really have it. Insta, yeah? insta, please. We cannot change the core, but we can appear like we would be. Noble. <laughs> so they make the following agreement. The natrium says, hey. I give you my electron. Then this electron is st will stick to the chloride. Chloride looks like argon, it's happy. Natrium looks like neon, is also happy. But what happened? Huh? What happened? The natrium has now one electron to less because the number of protons in the core did not change. The nucleus is still the same. So we have here positive charged atom. A positive charged atom. Yeah? Not only a particle, but a whole atom positively charged because there is missing one electron. And the chlor is negatively charged yeah? because it's one electron too much. Such whole charged atoms are called ions. A positive ion now and a negative ion now. And now, if I put in here an electrical field, if I in place, I have here a positive charged atom. And since we are in a liquid, this atom can even change places. So this atom, there will be a force. This will be for sure. And there is a force also in the other direction here. The force will be the same because it's one elementary charge, here's also one elementary charge, one positive in field direction, one negative in the other field direction, but the the uh, absolute value is, is, is the same. And since those atoms can move, because it's a liquid, they will start to move. And suddenly I have moved charges occurred. If such thing has happened, if something is is Falling apart into ions, this is called is called is dissociated. Dissociated to ions. And since ions also transport the nucleus, and inside the nucleus we said is the mass, this is also mass transportation. So once we apply or mods this current rushing through a liquid, we also have mass transportation. We can even calculate how many grams or milligrams per second at that at that. So if you have somewhere an electrode, a negative electrode, the natrium is going to the negative electrode and will appear there, physically appear there. Hi, I'm the natrium. Where are the negative things? <laughs> we even use this technical yeah, to plate something, to put some something on, galvanizing this is called. Then we let travel atoms to an electrode and the electrode is slowly covered by those atoms so we can plate things. And yeah, such liquid. Liquid which is has dissociated materials inside, yeah? chemical components, like said, there is also there is also acids which behave that way. Uh, if there's, it's called, it's called uh, electrolyte. Yeah? So a conductive liquid Ele electrolyte. This would be German, electrolyte in German. Yeah? When we write it with K. English electrolyte. Yeah, this is how conductivity in fluid is working. There's not only conductivity in fluids, there's also conductivity in gas. This is not our everyday experience, right? That we travel, that we're passing by the power socket and suddenly we get a stroke. Yeah? Because 
from, from our everyday experience, gas is, is an isolator. What needs to happen that gas is getting a conductor, we will see next time, next video. Next video, conductivity of gases. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.